Okay, so I'm pretty excited to make this video today because Nebraska is in a bit of a unique situation. We're coming off of a win against Northwestern, and we're now 4-3 and three as a football team. And we've actually won four of the last five games that we've played with Heinrich Harburg as the starting quarterback. But here's the drama, and here's the situation, is you've got fans on both ends of the spectrum. You've got some fans over here that are dissatisfied with the team, think that our offense still looks like crap, not, not excited about the, the wins and, and the scores that we're coming off of with these wins. And then you've got fans on the other end of the spectrum that are going, Matt Rule is the real deal. We're, we're winning games that we wouldn't have won last year. We're, we're potentially going to be bowl eligible if we can get in two more wins before the end of the season. So you've got fans on each end and then you've got fans in between. And I've, I've been hearing a lot of chatter from a lot of people, again, whether it's friends or family or people on the internet, I, there's definitely a lot to talk about. So what's up guys? Welcome back to FFT. I'm Trevor. Let's check it out. Okay, so I, I'm excited to be back making another video. After a week away, I was on a hunting trip here in Colorado, but I'm excited to talk some Nebraska football. And I'll say it, this was a, in my mind, significant win against Northwestern. I'm not saying it was a solid win. I'm not saying it's a sloppy win. I'm saying it's a significant win. And we're going to dive into that a little bit deeper, but I'm going to cover five things in this video. And we're going to talk about the current status of Nebraska. We're going to talk about our QB situation. We're going to talk about injuries. We're going to talk about the remainder of our schedule. And then I want to finish off by talking about Matt Rule. Um, all of these things, I've seen a lot about it, a lot of buzz, a lot of drama, a lot of chatter, I guess you could say, across Twitter, across a bunch of different platforms, um, reactions to my videos or things that I've been posting. But let's, let's go ahead and start with the status of Nebraska. I'll say it again. This was a significant win. It, when I say the word significant, I don't mean that this is game breaking. I don't mean that this is um, something that we should be losing our minds about as Nebraska fans, but it is something that shows us we are moving in the right direction. If you take this game, I guarantee it. If you take this Nebraska versus Northwestern game, you go back 365 days. If we had been playing them last year at this time, we probably would have found a way to lose this game. It was just something that was, it, there was this mental block that the coaching staff, that the players could not get past. Even games that we that should have been outright wins. We there's something about it. We weren't. We didn't have the winning mentality that I believe that we are now gaining as a, as a Nebraska football team. So I'm excited about it, and it's significant because it does mean that we are moving in the right direction. I said it in a couple of videos ago. I want to continue to see growth as as a football team. Our defense continues to be solid, and they are the reason that we won this game. Our offense is is a little bit lackluster, is a little bit, uh, has a little bit to be desired. Um, it, and it, it's something that isn't always fun to watch. I mean, we're still having some turnover issues. We're still having some bad decision making and, and we have some injuries, which I'll talk about here in a little bit too, but the ability to find a way to win in this game is significant as a football team. I, again, like I said, I want to continue to see growth and I want to see that we're moving in the right direction and being able to find a win in, in, a, in a situation where we could have very easily lost this game is significant. So uh, I'll, I'll say it again, great defense, we're, we're seeing growth and we're potentially going to be bowl game eligible if we can find two more wins, which I think is very doable actually based on the remainder of our schedule. We could be bowl eligible. Yeah, I'll say it again. That is something that is exciting, not for this season. I mean, yes, obviously it's fun to have another game and an opportunity to uh, for fans to show up and root for their team and, and go to another state potentially. And, and you know, I, I went to the Music City Bowl a few years ago against Tennessee, and that was a lot of fun. And so it is, it is a fun time and a, and a great, you know, opportunity for the team. But I look at it more in terms of the ability for us to continue to grow and have momentum going into next football season. I look at it as an opportunity for us to have more practices for the coaching staff to get to know their players better for the player to come or for the players to come together in a, in a tighter brotherhood and, and community and, 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 
and, and group. I want us I want us to be able to have that opportunity and uh, having a bowl game that we can aspire to and hopefully come off of with a win just gives us that extra momentum going into next football season. So I do think it is a significant win against Northwestern. And you can tell me all you want that the, the wins we've had aren't that great. And, and sure, I mean, maybe the score is telling us that our offense could be better. Maybe the teams we're playing aren't the best caliber teams. But if, <laughs> I mean, the Big Ten West is wide open. You can't tell me that it's not. We have, I don't think I'm delusional by saying we have an opportunity to take the Big Ten West based off of how these other teams are playing. So um, if Nebraska can take this momentum into the rest of the season, like I said, the season isn't something that I'm, I'm looking forward to as, you know, something that, I'm not looking forward to the remainder of the season in terms of, of wins. I'm looking forward to the remainder of the season in terms of growth and trajectory. So that's what I'll say about that. Let's talk about our QB situation really quick. I've been seeing a lot of things about, you know, what what do we have to lose if we put Jeff Sims back in? And I would say a game, the rest of the season, the momentum that we have. I think those are the things that we have to lose. And I'm not saying it would happen if we put him in. But that's definitely a possibility by putting him back in. We were 0 and 2 with Jeff Sims as the starter. We're now four four out of the last five games, uh, so four and one with Heinrich Harburg as the starter. And even though he hasn't been the best, remember what we were talking about after the Colorado game. It's all about turnovers. We don't need an offense that can score every time they have the football in their hands. We don't need a, a field goal every time that we're driving down the field. We don't need a touchdown every time that we have an opportunity. We just need to not be turning the ball over every time the offense is on the field. And Heinrich Harburg has been our best bet when when in, in terms of turnovers and decision-making and making sure that we protect the football. So that's what we have to lose. And I'll tell you what, it is a fun story having Heinrich Harburg as this Nebraska kid that's grown up loving Nebraska football, now having an opportunity to be a difference maker on this football team. I'm excited about it as a Nebraska fan. I don't think that he is, unless we see a lot of growth through next summer, I don't think he's the long-term solution for our football team. I think that we're going to need to potentially find somebody else going into next season if we truly want to see our offense take that next step. But he's he's... He's a great morale boost for our team right now, and I love the the sort of PR that we're getting as a Nebraska football team based on what he's been able to do and, and, the, and the wins that we've had under his belt. So I I'm not against Jeff Sims. I think I just think if the you know if the system's working, why throw something in there that could potentially break it at this time? So that that, that that's my two cents. But again, I'll reiterate: I don't hate Jeff Sims. I don't love Heinrich Harburg, but the system that we currently have in place, it's a turnover game. And Heinrich Harburg's winning that turnover game right now. Let's go ahead and talk about number three, injuries. Injuries continue to plague Nebraska. I, I've, I've been looking into it. I, I don't know. I mean, it's a lot of knee injuries that we're seeing. Um, and those aren't, I mean, it's, I, I hate to say it, but it, it's not something that we really have control over. These are kind of fluke things. These aren't things that our coaching staff is doing wrong. We're not telling players to fly around the field in a way that's unsafe um, or, or tackling in a way that is putting us in a bad spot or running in a way that's, that's giving them a higher potential to get hurt. I don't think that's the case. And based off of what I've been reading and seeing, I, I think it's just a fluke. And it's, I mean, it's a, that Nebraska curse, I guess you could say, that when we finally start to see something rolling, we see players go down for whatever reason. It's happened with Martinez in the past. It's happened with, you know, our running backs and our wide receivers. Our wide receiver room is shrinking and shrinking fast. It's not exciting to see and just another, you know, sort of obstacle that we're going to have to get past as a Nebraska football team. But I think we'll we'll be able to figure it out. It's not like we don't have the depth to to get past this. Obviously, we're just going down the depth chart a little bit. And for an offense that's already struggling, you, you hate to see it. But maybe this is going to give opportunities to players that otherwise wouldn't see the field and, and honestly could be a blessing in the long run for these, you know, these freshmen and sophomores that have a couple more years to play for Nebraska. You know, it could be it's, that's the silver lining in my eyes. So here's the remainder of the schedule for Nebraska. We've got, let's see, five games left in regular season. We've got Purdue, Michigan State, Maryland, Wisconsin and Iowa. 
I'm not going to come in here and, uh, you know, shoot sunshine up your butt, but we, we have the opportunity to win each of these last games. I'm not saying we're going to win out all of these last five games. We only need to win two of these last five. I personally think that we could win or that we will win three or four even of these last five games. None of them stand out to me other than like Maryland as probably our biggest competition. Um, and it's, it's just going to come down to, <laughs> it's going to come down to a lot of things, quite frankly, but our defense showed that even with our offense, not playing great this last game against Northwestern, that they were stout the entire game. And you love seeing that as a Nebraska fan, our black shirts are back and they are strong and they've got stamina. They've got the ability to, to fight through the entire four quarters, and you love seeing that. So let's talk about this last thing. And this is probably where I'll get the most hate, maybe, just based on what I've been seeing. But I am in love with Matt Rule. I love what he's doing, how he's building culture and camaraderie with the team. And I don't know if you've seen these pump-up videos that I've been posting on Twitter that, that he's been, you know, his pregame speeches. The players look up to him. They love his energy. They love his composure and his his go get him attitude. And he is he is a, a wise, smart coach that has integrity, that has um, a vision for the future. He he is the real deal, and he is the best coach we've had since I was a little kid. I, I couldn't even tell you. I mean, maybe since like. Frank Solich, I, you know, like that's kind of where I put him in my mind currently is that sort of feel. And I think that he is giving us like what we talked about at the very beginning of the season. He said that this, it's going to be a, a work in progress, that it's going to, we're going to need a couple building years, maybe one or two building years to really get us up to what he was doing at Temple or at Baylor. And everything that he's doing, the things that he's saying in the post game pressers, the things that he's doing on the sideline to amp up his team and, and to yell at the the players when they're making mistakes and and calling them out and and you know holding them accountable are things that you love seeing as a fan. You don't want to see this pushover coach. You don't want to see somebody that's cursing at their players. And he he finds that happy medium and he's doing what I think needs to be done to build this culture up for Nebraska and and push us with momentum and acceleration into year two. So I'm very excited about what he's doing. I'd love to know what you guys think. Am, am I, you know, am I blowing steam? Am I delusional? Um, what what are the highlights that you guys are seeing and what are your projections for the remainder of the season? Like I said, I think we win three or maybe even four of these last five games. I think it's possible. I absolutely think it's possible. And I think we are going to a bowl game. At this point, I don't see, I don't see a road where we don't make it to a bowl game. We just need to win two of these last five games. And I think we have a lot of opportunity to do that. Um, but, but let me know your thoughts, uh, leave a comment down below or else please at least like, and subscribe. If you guys want to see some more FFT content, I cover the, the Nebraska Cornhuskers, but I also cover fantasy football. So if that's something that you're into, uh, please like, and subscribe so that you guys can continue to follow that. But until then I'll catch you guys later. Go big red. Yeah.